What did this budget show for you? Uh, what, what are the key highlights we should know about it? Well, I think, you know, uh, putting our money where it makes sense, to put it really short, which is growth, jobs, innovation, those kinds of things. We need those. And the parliament has a, has a very strong uh, position on that we should keep the, uh, the, 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 the limits for those where they are and not cut them like the member states want to do. They always want to cut them. So what's their reasoning for wanting to cut them, in your opinion? Because well, there seems to be obviously, obviously be this tension between the council recommendations for the budget, which is to, as you said, cut, and the parliament's recommendations, which is to ensure that the proposals for future European projects are properly funded. Why is there this tension in the first place, do you reckon, this constant uh, tension over the budget? I think it's actually pretty simple. After all, the member states all have their needs and if you look from the the member states perspective it's really hard for them for the government to go to their citizens and explain to them that that hang on we have to cut a little bit here and there maybe you know pensions the health insurance whatever but we have to give the money to the european budget but this is uh, uh, regrettable because the you know the the citizens in the member states don't really know that much about about the European Union's budget and, and how the money is being used and, and specifically for what it's being used. And so, so we all have more work here to do. We have to be more clear in our communication. We have to uh, make it um, um, understandable to the citizens that, that actually really putting our money together to things that can have added value would make sense to them as well. And it's not just like this, this uh, endless... Uh, you know, a feeding machine in Brussels that, that requires to have the money and then they will never see it again. But in terms of if we look at the, the vision of the Commission President Jean-Claude Juncker wanting more integration in terms of defence, foreign policy, that's going to take up more money, that's going to need more money. And in, in a sense that does feed into the narrative that the EU is just a political machine which always asks for more. Mm. Well, well you, I assume you anticipate that the EU is going to be asking yeah, for more. Now that you mentioned Juncker and, and, and common defence, I mean, if we really look at where we are in, in the European Union as far as defence goes, it's totally up to the member states, totally up to the member states. What we are talking about here is that it doesn't make any sense for the member states, each and everyone, to spend an X billion uh, euros for defence, for arms, for example, when these things could be bought together and shared pool and share kind of a principle where actually they would end up saving billions and billions of euros of money. Whereas, you know, if you, if you save a billion and then you put maybe a hundred million to a common uh, fund for, for making these things possible, it just makes it's, sense. It's the, obviously, the idea is then you have to sell the idea of a common resources in terms of defence and the military. Yeah. Just one more question. We obviously, what was voted in uh, Parliament today was to do with the 2018 budget for the European Union. Pretty much everything to do with the European Union for 2018. Now, 2019 might be slightly different in the sense that one of the member states on one of the big contributors to the European Absolutely. Fund will be leaving. Now, the, whatever the actual amount the, the UK contributes is, is pretty disputed, but let's say 10 billion mm. um, euros. That's a lot of money to try and get back. And if the suggestion is more money is needed for the budget year on year on year, that's going to mean massive tech, uh, hikes for contributing funds for mm, other states, you know, surely. What, what's going to happen, I think, is that there, there will be a lot of changes to this, whole, to this whole structure of how we do the budgets. And I don't think there is anyone really uh, in, their, in their right mind who would think that we would be able to fill the gap euro for euro or sterling pound for pound, whatever. Um, what's going to happen, my take, is that, that there will be a, a rather large restructuring of the whole budget. You know, cohesion, agriculture, that will be looked at very hard where does the money really need to go there? And then, when we get some savings, perhaps in, uh, under those two uh, categories uh, or headings, then we would be able to refinance the budget. And also then the member states probably would have to, you know, discuss within themselves and say, okay, well, Britain is leaving and now we have to do all these things, migration, a big challenge. So 
you know, do we want to do it together or not? And that's going to be ultimately, uh, at the end of the day, uh, for the member states to really come up with an answer.